Hello world, hello students, Dr. K here. I wanted to go over an example of a check digit calculation with a any item in the house. So this is one of the things I, I ask all my students to do. We learn how to check, we learn how to calculate the check digit of any item around us in the house. Most items, like I said in class, most items have 12 digits. The barcode has 12 digits, that's the most common. Small items have eight, like, you know, gum or, um, Sometimes candy has eight, and of course books have 13. But let's go over this. So this is an example of a 12. I believe this. these are, my wife got these. I believe this is, is this food? No, no, it's not, no, it looks, no, hold on, hold on. I think these are, I, I know, candles, candles. Yes, they are candles. So my wife got these, she has amazing taste. Okay, let's look. So the, the 12, digits of the barcode are here. A common mistake is students see this and they say, Dr. K, I only see 10 numbers. The 10 numbers that are in the barcode itself, they forget that there's a number up first and a number at the end. So it's 12 numbers altogether. So the whole idea is that I cover or the students, we cover the last digit, the check digit, and then we use all the digits before that to calculate it. And it's a beautiful example. So I wrote, I wrote this here, I wrote the numbers here. So you can see, I wrote, I write them in groups of four, just like a credit card. So there are four, four more, three, and then the check digit. In this case, the check digit right now, you know, I, I, we know the answer. The check digit is two, but I'm going to show how, if this was covered, how would students calculate it? So let's go over the example. Okay. So what do I tell students? I tell students, let me make sure this is clear. I tell students, the first thing we got to do is we know that because it's a 12 digit barcode or an eight digit barcode, this is not a credit card number. The check digit algorithm, the Dr. K way, the easy way is that we know that the check digit gets multiplied by a one. And we know that we're alternating ones and threes. So is this going to be three, one, three, one or one, three, one, three. Let's think about that for a minute. You could pause the video and think. Is this gonna be a, the last check digit? The check digit here has to be a, has to be multiplied by a one. And preceding that is a three, one, three, and we alternate. So you could see that we are multiplying this way. It's an even number, so we are checking, we are starting, basically the odd positions, we multiply them by three. The even positions, we multiply them by one. Okay, let's go from here. Let's kind of go through, um, one times three is three. Nine times one is nine. Three times five. Three times five is 15. We don't care about the 10. We don't care about the number in the tens digit. Three times five is 15. So all we care about is the five. We just care about the digit in the ones digit. Students can explain, I'll explain why that is. And also students, once they understand the algorithm, they understand what that is. Zero times one is zero. 2 times 3, 6, 6 times 1, 6 again, 3 times 5, again it's 15, we just write the 5, we don't care about the 1, 3 times 1 is 3, 6 times 3, 18, we don't care about the 1, so it's just 8, 8 times 1, also 8, 5 times 3 again, 15, so that's a 5, and of course we have the check digit is, um, we, we can ignore it for now. So the whole idea is that we want to know what is this last digit, the check digit, the check digit. So what I tell students right now is before you start making it difficult on yourself and adding these numbers, let's see if we could cancel out some. Can we make groups of 10? Can we make two five? Can we cancel out two fives? Can we cancel out uh, two, you know, a seven and a three, an eight and a two? because we want to make it easy on ourselves. So this is where you pause the video and go over it. Make sure you got this right. Okay, I see a five. I can cancel this five with that five. Okay, what else? I can, I can cancel three numbers as well. Can I, can I group three numbers to cancel a multiple of 10? Of course, Dr. K, we do this all the time. Students do this so much faster than me. They have better brains. Six plus six is 12 plus eight. That adds up to 20, so we can cancel that. Okay, what more? What more can we cancel? 
Dr. K, I can't believe you're not seeing it. Cancel the zero. Yes, thank you. Oh, three plus nine is 12, and I got an eight right here. Three plus nine is 12, and I cancel with the eight, and we reduce down to a number that's less than 10. So what, what's left? Three and five. What's three plus five is eight. We know that when we add that, the, the summation, the modified sum, after alternating, multiplying the digits by three, one, three, one, three, one, and so on. We know that that has to be a multiple of 10. So the eight that we produced, how much more to get to 10? To go from eight to 10, we need a two. So the check digit has to be a two. And we already knew that the check digit is a two. The check digit is a two. And of course we knew that already, but you know, in students in the beginning, they don't know that and because I cover it on my website. I've got like tens of these examples and we do this because we want, and here's the two and we want students. I want students to be fluent. I want students to understand it. So there are other ways of, of, of thinking about this. We say we sum up the digits. Well, let me review. Is there another way? Do people teach this a different way? I, I do it this way because I, I do a simplified calculations, no calculators needed. What is the original? How was the OR algorithm taught originally? Or how is how it was described if you Google it, if you look at the check digit algorithm? You are told that you take all the positions, all the digits in the odd positions. So basically the digit, the first digit, the third digit, the fifth digit, the seventh digit, you know one and so on these digits every other digit in the odd positions you go ahead and multiply them by three you add them up then you multiply by three you take you add up the digits in the even position you keep them as is like you multiply them by one you add the whole grand sum and then you round to the next multiple of 10. well that gets you the same answer and we just do it faster in our classroom because my job is to make my students math geniuses and to enjoy this. I start with as, as young as sixth graders can do this, seventh graders, eighth grade, definitely. And then it's a memorable connection to math where they never see a barcode the same way. They never see any object without, you know, being inquisitive about the barcode and wanting to calculate the check digit because I got the best students in the world and that's what we do and it's a lot of fun. This is an example on the 12. I'll make a separate video for um, a, a check digit with eight. I'll make another video on credit cards. I'll make another video on books, ISBN, um, international standard book number with our 13 digits, same thing. So just to review, for eight digit barcodes, for 12 digit barcodes, we're alternating, we're multiplying by three, one, three, one, or one, three, one, three, the whole idea is that we want the check digit to be multiplied by one. We add, we only care about the digit of the singles, that the ones digit. We Before we add, we make it easy for ourselves by eliminating groups of 10, numbers that add up to 10, unless we're, until we're left with the very last number. In this case, it was three and five, so add up to eight. We ask ourselves how much more to get to the next multiple of 10. In this case, it was from eight to 10, so that's two. The check digit was two. I don't want to make the video too long. Got the best students in the world. Check digit, beautiful math activity, and um, look forward to doing more of this in class. Love you, bye.